It's been a day since it happened. The moment that we had all been waiting for, the North London derby. And as an Arsenal fan, I was thinking, we were going to roll these guys over. Never, ever, ever give up. Now, Arsenal versus Spurs was an absolute reality check for every single Arsenal fan. Tottenham and Arsenal sitting on the exact same amount of points. This game would decide the futures of each club going on for the rest of the season. But what did we do? We drew D-R-E-W. If we're being real, all four goals during that game were scored by Tottenham players. So we got a deflected goal, Saka cutting in with his left foot, shooting and Romero giving that deflection right into the back of the net. Then Tottenham come back and they score off a Raya mistake. And people need to again take a step back, realize that the Raya hype train lasted two games. During the big game moments, man flapped. He flapped his arms. <sighs> And realistically, he should have done better for that first goal. Another player that should have done better during that first goal was literally Saka himself. He can't be playing all the positions at once. Where was our right back? Ben White was literally in the 18-yard box, just chilling. And Saka's out there trying to press a man after he just ran the whole length of the pitch. Madison strolls past him with ease, puts it into the box, and who's there? The man, Mr. Clinical himself, Hyung Min Son. Then after that, we go into halftime, 1-1. Okay, I'm thinking in my head, okay, we, we, we gotta come out and we gotta come fast. Fast! Because if we don't come fast, Tottenham, they're just gonna overload us. Because in the midfield, we were losing that battle. Erdegaard, Ghostly, Eddie and Ketia. <laughs> and the real problem that I have with that is because Jesus had a blinder. Uh, against PSV and you know we're, we're saying 4-0 he had an incredible performance but you know where he was playing striker so in the North London derby Arteta goes you know what and Ketia you're starting striker Jesus we're gonna shift your position you're going left because Trossard gets injured why not in that situation play Jesus up top where he belongs and instead of playing Eddie and Ketia on the left wing or instead of playing Jesus on the left wing why don't you play an actual winger left wing Nelson left wing who's been trying his hardest to get into this team for ages and is getting minimal opportunities. Sometimes I look at my TV and I'm thinking, it's the 85th minute, why are we bringing on a player? You know how that must feel as a player to be called up in the last five minutes of a game just to go and run about like a headless chicken? It must feel so degrading. Reese Nelson has deserved a chance in this team for ages because every single time he comes on, he is direct, he is forward thinking, and he just knows kind of what his role is in the team. He hasn't got this massive ego. He knows his role. He knows where to be at in certain places. We need to understand that Reese is integral to being a backup. So when that opportunity arises, when we need a backup, why are we not playing the backup? And then even then, okay, maybe he didn't suit the game. We have Emil Smith-Rowe. In the 2021 season, Emil Smith-Rowe was actually better than Saka. We were looking at both of these players thinking, wow, I think, you know, they both have high ceilings, but Emil Smith-Rowe has a higher ceiling than Saka. And just because man got injured, just because he's taken a little bit long to get back into the gist of things, we don't want to trust him. Emil Smith-Rowe is highly underrated and he just needs to be given this chance. So if you weren't going to start Reese, start Emil Smith-Rowe. Now, obviously, Arsenal get a penalty through a handball controversial decision. Again, that is another one of Tottenham's goals, realistically. Like, we didn't earn anything in this game. Tottenham were miles better for you know the occasion but luckily we shored things up obviously Jorginho made an absolute howler of a mistake to make it 2-2 for them to get that last goal but again we're self-inflicting our wounds it's like friendly fire in cod back in the day where they allowed it yeah you could just pull up in the lobby and just shoot your partners that is not how the game goes bro why are you shooting me we are supposed to be a team i'd rather El Nenny come on and do some sideways passing for 90 minutes then you come on and just make a mistake it don't make sense where do we go from here because you've probably seen all the reactions you've seen all the shouting i don't want to shout i want to talk let me talk we haven't really been dictating and killing people off you know who we missed as well martinelli he's a one-dimensional one-trick pony winger but at least the brother runs at his defender obviously jesus was doing well but he was dropping so deep that we didn't even get anywhere near or in their 18 yard box. Now Arteta, I think, stunk up the place with his decisions. He brought two of our slowest players on in the second half where we needed to fight back to get a goal. If you wanna attack a team like Tottenham, if you wanna penetrate, you need 
quick players. Zinchenko was hard, he was coasting as well. He's not good defensively. So just move Zinchenko into where Rice is playing and play Tomiyasu instead of bringing on Jorginho, who is retired. He is pretty much retired. Now I am devastated, but also furious at Arsenal. I didn't even want to make a video reacting to that game because I just had so, like, there's just so many things going through my head that I can't even speak about unless I literally got interviewed by a Sky Sports pundit because I need to be brought up on all these different situations to be able to speak and have my opinion on them. But genuinely, that was a reality check. Wake up call, Arteta, wow. Make some gay signings if you want, just make some signings. Not one person above a five in that game. Not one person above a five, man. Raw reactions.